Well, good morning and welcome to our online service from Kings North Church for the 12th of July. Uh, I'm Bruce, part of the staff team here, and I'm delighted that our old friend Graham Nunn from the Church Army is here to continue our series from Ephesians. When I say our old friend, I'm not referring to Graham's age, but just that we've known him for an awfully long time. Um, I think Graham knows exactly what I mean. I hope that's all OK, Graham. Let's worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We remind ourselves about why we've come to gather together to worship today. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Let's start by coming to a time of confession, examining ourselves before God, putting ourselves right with him before we continue in worship. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say today's collect, the prayer for today. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. And shortly after that, Shireen will come and read to us and then Graham will speak.
reading is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we, have, we both have access to the Father by the Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. Good morning, Kings North. Um, hope you're all well. Um, it's strange, isn't it, to uh, have sermons on videos and uh, can do it from wherever in the world really you can be, be preaching somewhere uh, this morning i'm in two places at once i'm at st paul's maidstone as well as here uh, the beauties of technology uh, but uh, bruce asked me if i'd talk a little bit about lockdown and what it's meant to me well it's been difficult if i'm really honest with you as someone who works with people with children and schools and churches being interactive doing things visually trying to uh present the gospel in that way it's been a difficult time I felt quite anxious at times through health and uh, uh, having a Chinese young lady working with me who's in lockdown here in the UK it's it's been quite difficult um, this anxiousness I've been praying more and I'm thinking of how to do new things because this is going to be around a long time we're not going to be allowed back into to schools so I don't think till the new year, we know that we can't sing in churches. So we can't do some of the things that we're normally used to, but God does a new thing. So I've been looking at different ways of doing magic and illusions and trying to make people think. So here's one for you. I want you to look at a clock face. I want you to think of a number on that clock face. Now you've got that number, I want you to go across the clock face, right across diagonally to the number opposite the clock face of the one number you've just chosen. Now I want you to take the lower number from the higher number. So take the lower number from the higher number. You're left with a number. Add three. I want you all to do this add three to that number now the amazing thing is you're all thinking of the number nine maybe there can be some feedback in the coffee time afterwards but it's the number nine you're all whatever you've chosen it will be nine so i'm thinking of different ways of doing things and uh, starting to do a youtube channel designated for children uh, for schools, specific schools, to try and help people in the way forward. God bless you. Thank you. Father God, let's just pray. Father God, we open our eyes, our ears, our hearts and minds to your holy word. Amen. You know, you don't have to go far to discover walls hostility that divide people. Unfortunately, conflict is one of the most ordinary spaces in which we live as human beings. It is true at the global level. Nations are constantly clashing against nations, Israelites and Palestinians, Iraq, Iran. It's true at the national level. I'd like you to think about conflict that you're experiencing in your life right now. Hold it in your mind. 
Now, I'd like us to think about conflict like a brick wall that is built between us and that personal group of people. How do you build a wall? One brick at a time. Each of those bricks are moments in time. They are actions taken, words spoken, love withheld, a bitter word, a hateful comment, a cold shoulder. Brick after brick is laid down until sometimes the wall is so high and thick that it seems impossible to change. Can you see that wall in your mind? The question for us today is, how can we break down this wall? I wonder how many of you have seen the movie War Horse? Great movie. The movie takes place during World War I. We see the British Army and the German Army entrenched on each side. The battle has been raging for months. The men are about to mercilessly, mercilessly destroy one another by shooting bullets into each other's bodies, skewering each other with bayonets, filling each other's lungs with toxic mustard gas. I know it's hor horrific. We need to see the brutality of the context in order for this scene to have impact. In the middle of the battle, a horse gets free and starts running. The horse runs through a bunch of barbed wire and gets so tangled up he's trapped on the battlefield right in between the two armies. Two men who are about to kill each other come together in a bond of peace. Why? Because they shared compassion for this helpless creature. The walls fell down for a moment. Sadly, the wall went right back up and these men resumed the killing. The question before us remains, how can we break down this wall? The Apostle Paul wrote this letter from prison. It's important to note this fact because the reason he is in prison is directly tied to our topic. Paul was in trouble because he was accused of breaching a wall. You see, the temple that sat in the heart of Jerusalem was a series of walled-in courtyards. Right in the centre was the temple itself. Only the priests were allowed inside the temple because this represented the very presence of God. Even then, only one priest was allowed to go into the most holy place, and that only once a year. Then the next courtyard was called the Court of Israel, which means that only circumcised male Jews were allowed to come in here. You know, I've always wondered how they check that. Talk about an awkward way to start your service. Whew. The next courtyard was the Court of Women. Again, only Jewish women were allowed here. Then way out here on the side was the court of Gentiles. If you were not a Jew, that you would not be welcome in the temple if you were a Gentile. Imagine what our worship space would be like if it was under these rules. We'd have a big curtain around the altar and only Caroline, oh no, 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 sorry, in those days, only men would be allowed to, st to step foot in there. But another curtain around the chancel and only Bruce and I would be allowed to step foot in there then only male members of the congregation would be allowed to sit in the pews. Female members of the congregation could stand in the aisle and look in. Everybody else could stand outside if they wanted. And enter Paul. Enter Paul. He'd been out traipsing around the countryside, interacting with Gentiles. He even brought some Gentiles back with him. The horror. He was accused of bringing one of the Gentiles into this space. <gasps> That's why they wanted to kill him. Paul speaks of a wall of hostility. He's not just speaking in the abstract. He's talking about this physical representation of the division and exclusion of people from the community of God's people. The passage can be broke down into two main parts, a before and an after. In the before part, he says, So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called by the circumcision a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope about God in the world. But there's a key phrase, but now, but now something has changed because of Jesus. And then you see how central Jesus is in this section. In Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, has broken down the dividing wall. But is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law of its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself 
one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access one spirit to the Father. You see, this is the gospel. This is the good news. Jesus has put to death that hostility through his death on the cross. You know we say this all the time, but have ever asked how that works, what really happened? Think about it this way. The biggest wall of hostility in the universe is the wall between us and God. How many times have we hurt God by our pettiness and anger and lying and cheating and on and on? If anyone had the right to be hostile towards us, it would be God. But God looks at us. He looks at you and says, I have died to the wall. I have died to your sin. And the many times you have hurt me and others, I forgive you and I love you. And as he looks at us with that eternal love, all the bricks just vanish. And then Jesus looks at the walls of hostility that still remain between us and said, I've knocked this down. I have proclaimed peace. How about it? What about your wall today? Look at each of those bricks, each of those hurtful things that you want to cling to. Once you were defined by them, once there was this other person far off on the other side and you on this side. But now, because of God's love demonstrated in Jesus and through the power of God's spirit moving between us, we can let go of the past, forgive the bricks, and work towards the future of peace in the presence of God. I know it's far more complicated than that, and over in 10 minutes I can't even scratch the surface of how to do it. I realise that there are legitimate times when people need to be kept apart. However, I also think that many times we hide behind these walls and use them as an excuse for not loving the way Jesus called us to love. Maybe this week, you can start with one brick. I challenge you to think about that wall and think about the bricks. Choose one thing that someone has done to you. Write it down. Ask God to give you the strength to smash it. Jesus has smashed it already. Just let yourself see it dissolve. One brick at a time and let the walls fall down. Let's just pray together. Father God, we have many bricks, many walls in our lives against other people. And Father God, you came to break the walls down, to smash them to pieces. Help us this week to take to mind the walls that exist between us and break them down brick by brick. Amen.
thank you, Graham, for bringing that word to us uh, about the divide, the, the bricks that we can remove. Thank you so much. Graham will be at our Zoom coffee time later if you'd like to join us, if you want to ask him anything about what he's shared with us. Let's say together the creed, a statement of our belief. Let's say this with confidence. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Great. It's time to pray and uh, Susan is going to come and lead us in our intercessions. Thank you, Susan. Let us pray with one heart and one mind to the God who is our peace, who has reconciled us to him through his Son, our Lord. To the words, Lord of peace, the response is hear our prayer. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for the Queen, the Prime Minister and all who lead our nation. Give them wisdom and guide them into the decisions which bring justice and mercy to all, not just the chosen few. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole church, for Archbishop Justin, Bishop Rose and the whole diocese. And this week we pray particularly for the Anglican Church in Papua New Guinea and its Archbishop, the Most Reverend Alan Miggy. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who exercise chaplaincy ministry within our deanery. We pray particularly for the work and ministry of Ian Rich. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and reconciliation both in the world and in our own country. We pray for those who feel like outsiders. We pray for ourselves that we will, with your help, recognise our own biases and work to see others as you do. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders within our own church, for Caroline, Bruce and Sarah, for the LLT and PCC members and all those responsible for making decisions. We pray that they will be guided by you and ask for your wisdom. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are still shielding and those who feel isolated and left behind as the country reopens. We pray also for those who are fearful as we begin to go out more. Give us your peace and your wisdom and guide us into the right decisions about what we do. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are furloughed and all who have lost their jobs. For those who struggle in whatever way at this difficult time. We pray also for all those who have continued working throughout to provide us with all the things that we need. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish of Ashford Town and we pray for our new team rector Jeremy, his wife Lizzie and their family as they prepare to move to Ashford to start their ministry with us. We ask that you continue to prepare them in all the things that they need to do before they arrive with us. Lord of peace, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who are ill at this time, in body or in mind. We ask that you be with them, and we pray that they will know your healing presence. We pray for those who minister to them and care for them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Susan. We come to the blessing. I've chosen this blessing because it talks about the peace that I think Graham has been talking about. So let's pray that, amongst other things, over ourselves. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We're going to finish our, sen our service uh, in a moment with our final hymn. There's a few quick notices. As we've mentioned, there'll be a Zoom coffee time at 11.30. Please do join us if you can. If you need to message me, email me. My email will be on the service on the YouTube link at the end. Email me and I'll send you that link. Um, otherwise, it was on the notice sheet. Morning prayer, as usual, Monday, Tuesday, uh, no, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 9.30 via Zoom, but it is emailed out six times a week. Uh, join us then if you'd like to, also for Wednesday, five o'clock prayer time. Caroline and Nigel, as you may have noticed, are not with us today. They are on holiday. If there's anything that I can help you with in their absence, please get in touch with me. And just to say, the lights at Kings North Church are underway. We think the contractor is beginning to replace them. Uh, Kings North Church has been shut uh, partly because of that. Uh, Shaddockshurst, in the meantime, is open for, for private prayer in the week. We're so glad that you've been with us wherever you are, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. We're going to end our service now with our final hymn, And Can It Be That I Should Gain an Interest in the Saviour? Let's sing. <laughs>